Hi, and welcome to another episode of Becoming Less, an Edmontonian journey to less waste, less impact, less consumption, and less clutter. Becoming Less is brought to you by Waste Free Edmonton, and together we're dedicated to waste reduction efforts, both big and small. I'm Biz. I'm Emily. And today we are going to talk about everyone's favorite topic, (laughs) everything like toilet kind of related, toilet paper. We're going to talk about poop. Yeah, we're going to talk about poop, <laughs> essentially. Not, not really. We're going to talk about the, the stuff that you do after poop. Yeah, because I think that this is a really interesting topic because there's such a wide variety, I think, of, I guess, I don't know, methods or toilet paper replacements or things like that. And like even culturally, there's such a big difference between like Western culture and what's um, appropriate in other places. So yeah, I just thought it was really interesting to talk about that. So I guess to kick us off, Biz, what has your experience been with toilet paper or Wait, like what are your I thoughts wanna, on I it? I wanted to ask you a question first. Okay. Did you complete your goal of taking your bag out of your purse and putting it back? I did. Huzzah! And I actually used it once. Yes, that's a great question. Atomic habit achieved. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, now that I, re- I remember that it's in there, I still, there was one time where I did forget that I had a bag, but like I didn't use another plastic bag. I just like carried stuff when I I was like, oh, I could have used that bag that was in my purse. That would have been convenient. So I still like (laughs) it hasn't quite stuck yet, but I'm getting better. Cool. Yeah, slowly but surely. I ran to the store and it was like two blocks away from where I parked and I didn't bring a bag out of the car with me. And so I'm carrying like two things of milk two blocks away and every single person I passed was like, do you need a bag? Like... (laughs) Yeah, they're like, do you need some help? And you're like, no, 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 this is fine. No, I have to suffer because I forgot. <laughs> yeah, this is this is my punishment, basically. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's anyway. really funny. Okay, so what has my experience been with trying to go low waste with toilet paper? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll tell you what I do. Partly because I would not subject somebody to no toilet paper if they were to come visit me. Mm-hmm. And partly because I don't think my husband could do that either. (laughs) Right? Like it's a cultural thing in westernized culture that we have toilet paper and that it's accessible to our guests and things like that. But... It's just an expectation. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We installed a bidet. Ooh, okay. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So that the bidet does most of the work. So you only Mm -hmm. either have to use the toilet paper to like dry yourself off. Right. Instead of to like clean. Yeah. So there's no like, nope, not clean. Nope, not clean. Nope, not clean. Eh, good enough. <laughs> okay. So the, so the, yeah. So the bidet that you got, it was just like an, a bidet attachment that you bought for your toilet. Right. Yeah, and it was like. We rent, so we weren't about to replace the toilet or anything. Uh, mm-hmm. So our bidet is just hooked up to the line that goes into where the toilet intake is. And. Mm-hmm. You just turn a dial and it turns on. The unfortunate thing is the water is cold. Oh, right. So that took some getting used to. Yeah, that would be well, a bit of a shock whole, to the system. The whole process probably took some getting used to. But yeah. it doesn't even phase me now. I'm so used to mm-hmm. it. And I use way less toilet paper. And the other right. thing the other thing we used to use toilet paper for was blowing our noses. Mm-hmm. You, might, you might use tissue boxes or whatever, but basically the same thing in a slightly different shape. <laughs> mm-hmm. And we use reusable tissues. Right. Yeah, because you had made like reusable tissue uh, boxes kind of and then They're had so cute. Yeah, <laughs> tissues. So so I do the same thing as well. OK, so for me, I've purchased um, I'm still using toilet paper. So I've purchased like a different, a couple of different kind, kinds of toilet paper and done a little bit of research. Like when I f- kind of first went low waste, I kind of immediately when we ran out of toilet paper, jumped on the like there's a very kind of popular brand called Who Gives a Crap out of the United States. Is that the one I was talking to you about earlier? Yes. yes. Yeah. So okay. um, I bought a case of their toilet paper and their toilet paper, I believe, is bamboo toilet paper. Right. And it's plastic free. And that's kind of like their whole purpose, essentially, is that they basically want like environmentally friendly. Yeah. And oh, actually, sorry, it's uh, 100% recycled post consumer waste fibers in our toilet paper. So that's different. But so I had tried that brand. I feel like they have bamboo as well, don't they? 
Yeah, I I believe they do. Um, anyway, so I had bought a box of this toilet paper and to get it shipped to Canada, um, like it's a pretty large box. And so kind of looking back, I'm like, eh, it was probably like this kind of may have been a bit of unnecessary to have this box shipped directly to me. To be honest, like the toilet paper was really nice. It like had, yeah, super cute packaging, which I think is kind of part of like the draw to it. Paper packaging. Yes, it's all paper packaging. Yeah, they come in like little patterned wraps, don't they? Yeah, and they have like, you know, special Christmas boxes and (laughs) yeah, so they, so anyways, it's an American company. And so I had bought that and then was happy with the product or whatever, but thought that, yeah, me buying toilet paper and having it shipped individually to my home, like, is that really the smartest how many, choice? How many did you get? Did, which size of package did I you get? I got, I think, 48 rolls. I'm okay, literally so looking at the, the box because I still have it. It Yeah, I got the big one. The big one. And okay. I think... I think that was the other thing is that I have tried to kind of consider in cost and the toilet paper like it did last us for quite a long time. Well, so that's the thing because I was doing the math with who gives crap and I, it seemed to me that the amount we spend on toilet paper versus the amount that we would have got from one of those 48 roll boxes mm-hmm. probably would have equaled out. It would have been a little bit more expensive, but not that much more expensive. Like yeah, I, it wasn't it wasn't like horribly more expensive, I would say. So you um, get so much all at once. Mm-hmm. Like, it yeah, seems exactly. like a lot to spend on toilet paper. But I mean, you're going to use it. It doesn't go bad. Yeah, because I remember thinking that like, I think I, I think to get the box delivered for a 48 like double rolls so they're pretty big rolls actually um Mm -hmm. and it is three ply basically like it lasted quite a long time and i think it was probably like like it seemed outrageous at the time to spend like 75 dollars i think on this box of toilet paper to get shipped to me but really when you when you think about it like the size of the rolls it's three ply it is i do like the fact that it's a hundred percent post-consumer recycled material whereas like i'll talk a little bit later so i basically i bought this box of toilet paper used it up it was great but then was like uh maybe i should like look at some other options because are there canadian options so there are so the next box of toilet paper that i bought the next 48 you know plastic free box of toilet paper that i bought was this brand called wipe on us and it's a canadian company okay and so they make their toilet paper is made out of bamboo so this is kind of interesting because i was like oh a canadian company and to be honest i hadn't looked into it like too deep before i ordered the product because like we just needed toilet paper so i just like needed to buy some (laughs) um yeah basically their whole idea is that essentially they want to they want their toilet paper to be very climate conscious so it doesn't have any plastic and then it's really focused on like co2 emissions um so they use bamboo and so i guess for me like now that i've kind of been thinking about it a little bit more i also work in the forestry industry so i am a little bit biased with this because like while i don't really necessarily support you know having toilet paper and things like that come from trees that are harvested in the forest i kind of do agree with like more so on the side of having like recycled consumer like post-consumer material being used as tissue paper than like bamboo being grown and produced and turned into yeah i don't really understand i don't understand why toilet paper would be anything but recycled paper because yeah and so so that's kind of my position on it like there's gotta be enough paper out there yeah yeah right like i'm kind of more and and this is just my own personal opinion that i would rather purchase material that was post-consumer or yeah post-consumer recycled material for my like you know tissues and toilet paper and things like that that i know that you know i i want to kind of create a market i guess for that recycled material because i know that recycling is kind of something in our society that's ongoing and i i think that it's more important to like help create kind of a market for that instead of creating a new product from something else that you know is grown to be honest i I'm not 100% certain where their bamboo comes from, but like their product, Wipe on Us, their product isn't Canadian made. Obviously, because we don't grow bamboo here. Yeah, exactly. And so they have taken a lot into account on, you know, like what their emissions would be, whether they produce in Canada, whether they produce in China, like kind of considering all of those different things. But the reality is, is that bamboo isn't a Canadian product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just for me, 
I had just recently bought both tissues. So both like, you know, Kleenex or facial tissues from them as well as some toilet paper. And so I wouldn't say, to be honest, the quality was not as high as who gives a crap. Like I I definitely got a few more complaints <laughs> in my household and from guests. Who gives a crap had a better quality overall. I would say like the the three ply toilet paper that they had provided okay. that was 100% post consumer I thought was a better product than the wipe on us but they were both still fine when our forestry consumption reaches a point where we literally can't create like there's just no need for as much paper to be made then mm -hmm. I think we could go to something like bamboo which is so much faster producing than cutting down trees in, in our forests here in Canada. But until then, there I just can't see any reason why we wouldn't use post-consumer. Right, use a, a post-consumer material. Exactly. So, th so that's kind of my opinion. Because <laughs> when you recycle paper, you have to usually downgrade it anyway. Exactly. So, so it might as well be something that you wipe your butt with. Yeah, exactly. So I will say that there's quite a few different brands. And if you're if you aren't interested in paying like for shipping or like there are kind of other alternatives, actually, Earth General Store has kind of posted a blog about this, um, about toilet paper. And it's their blog from March 3rd, 2019, if you're interested in looking it up. But they have kind of done an analysis on this as well. Like, you know, looking at post-consumer material, like looking at actual price. And so the toilet paper that they carry, they carry it in bulk. It, it's plastic free. It comes like wrapped in paper and you can buy, I think, the indiv like rolls individually. So you don't have to buy a full box, which might be a good option for you. This toilet paper that they sell is more of like a professional quality. So it would be like, you know, the toilet paper that you would see like if you went into an office or something. So depending on what your expectations, I guess, for quality are, that could also be a good option. And I know that you can find plastic free post consumer recycled material toilet paper at places like Staples, like office supply offices will have them. And you can just buy like, yeah, a big, a big box of them, like 48 rolls or things like that. So oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. So I had kind of looked into this and it really depends because I think the other interesting thing is, is that for me personally, I like to look at what the post-consumer recycled material percentage is. And a lot of these, like that's going to vary from brand to brand. Like for example, who gives a crap, who is created out of the States, there's is supposedly 100%, yeah, 100% recycled toilet paper, but there's also brands that are like 50% post-consumer recycled material or, you know, 75%. So depending, I guess, kind of what, what your preference is, that would maybe lead you to one brand or another. Um, another one that I want to mention is seventh generation bathroom tissue oh, also yeah, yeah, yeah. has a hundred percent recycled paper. I feel like I've used that one a long time ago. It's it's a fairly common brand, um, mm. but it and it has 80% post-consumer content and then 20% pre-consumer content. So I guess also to break that down for people who haven't listened to our recycling episode um, is that post-consumer content would be like paper that has been used by... Like your office scrap paper. Yeah, and you like drew all over it and you used it and then you like put it into your office sh shredding bin or whatever. That would be included. Pre-consumer content means that someone hasn't actually used it or like, for example, maybe it was, I don't know, like a mag like a newspaper distributor or something like created all these newspapers that ended up having like a typo in them. So then, you know, that wasn't a post-consumer product. It was pre-consumer because then they would immediately recycle those, right? Those wouldn't go out to a consumer. Those would just immediately get recycled. No one would have used them because they weren't usable for the function that they were supposed to have. Right. And so that would be like an example of pre-consumer. So yeah, it just kind of depends. And then there's also kind of this like maybe shady side to recycling of this idea that maybe things are getting produced and not thoughtfully produced just so that they can be recycled and just so that you can kind of put that recycling stamp on uh, materials that are made out of that. But I won't get into that too, too much. But anyways, for me personally, just having post-consumer recycled content in my toilet paper is very important. <laughs> so yeah, I would kind of encourage people to check out maybe some of those different brands and then see what's available maybe at 
depending on where you like to shop, but what's available at like your local office distributor or or what makes sense for you. Yeah, for me personally, maybe I guess I have some like bougie toilet paper users in my house, but <laughs> definitely, definitely I will say the who gives a crap. They're kind of like the OGs of plastic free and sustainable toilet paper. But it is a little bit more expensive. It is a little bit more expensive, but I, w- I will say that like if you like like nice toilet paper, <laughs> then I would recommend kind of going going with something what, what like that. What do they say? But it is a bit pricier. It was like soft as a unicorn's mane and as strong as a thousand ponies or something like that. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Like they they have quite a hilarious marketing, I guess, uh, standpoint. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so that's that's kind of what I would recommend, but that has been my experience with them. I am super interested in the bidet, although I feel like I have to kind of like warm my partner up to it, especially I didn't think about that being just cold water. But you know what? You know what? If you just get it for you, he'll probably just get curious one day and try it. And maybe he'll just convince himself to do it. And to be honest, like, I do kind of appreciate the idea of, like, yeah, if you got mud on you, like, would you just wipe it off with with paper? Like, no, you'd probably, like, wet something and, like, wash yourself, right? Was that a meme or something? Like, if you got poop (laughs) on the wall, are you going to just smear it around with paper? (laughs) (laughs) Right? Exactly. Actually, I'm pretty sure that that's, like, a bidet advertisement. Yeah, I'm pretty sure sure. it is. I'm sure I've seen that one. You know, the funny thing is, we got our bidet as a Christmas gift exchange present. What? That is the most bizarre Christmas gift exchange present, but, like... Two years in a row, our first year Mm -hmm. of gift exchange was a giant thing of toilet paper. And then Uh the second year was a bidet. So we had to laugh that like two years in a row, we got the toilet. Like toilet related. (laughs) Okay, so what kind of bidet is it? Because I know I've seen like different brands like more so on social media and blah 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 but i'm just curious about like what your experience was with your bidet like was it easy to install it was very easy to install yeah and is it just like like you like how does it work is there like a button that you push but so like you take the toilet seat off i've never used a bidet so i'm really you, not sure yeah. with ours you take the toilet seat off mm-hmm. and then you put the, the the bidet goes underneath the part that the toilet seat screws onto. Okay. And so then you put the toilet seat back on over top of those screw holes, and that's what mm-hmm. holds it in place. Oh, okay. Is the toilet seat. And it and will then, fit on any toilet, like any yeah, standard Yeah, because it's got, like, it's got these little adjuster slider things so that depending on where your toilet seat screws attach, mm-hmm. it can go higher yeah. or lower or wider, right? So it, it doesn't really matter what toilet seat you have. It will, it'll work. I think it was not very expensive. I would be surprised if it reached fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. And it just, like I said earlier, hooks up into the line that would normally fill the tank. Right. Like it still fills the tank. It just gets split, right? So it mm-hmm. goes to the tank and to the bidet. And it's just the water pressure from your water line that pumps it out. Oh, okay. So it doesn't need any electricity or motor or anything like that. It's just a dial that opens and closes that line. The more you open it, the more pressure there is. And the more you close it, the less pressure it is. And you can decide how much you like. And then there's a little (laughs) nozzle to adjust. You can decide how hard it sprays you. Yeah, you can decide how hard it sprays you. (laughs) It's not, yeah, it's, I mean, it's it's line water. So it's not like it's fridge cold. (laughs) Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's just not heated. <laughs> you yeah. can get heated yeah, exactly. ones. Uh, a friend of mine has a bidet that she installed in her toilet, and it's way fancier than mine. It has like different colors that it lights up, and oh, you, and it it like you have different options where it can spiral or <laughs> pulse. Okay, <laughs> okay. So this is actually funny because there is a restaurant in Edmonton. I can't exactly remember what the name of it is right now, but it's somewhere downtown. And me and uh, some friends were going out for drinks after work. And I like went to the washroom and I was like, oh, what's going on here? And they totally had these like super fancy bidets in the restaurant yeah. washroom. Funnily, my first experience with a bidet was in a restaurant as well. It was in a Japanese, like, sushi restaurant in Jasper, Mm -hmm. I think. 
Oh, okay. And I went to the bathroom. All the and fancy I, like, restaurants have them. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, <laughs> is it even a fancy restaurant if it doesn't have a bidet? Like, come on. And I came <laughs> out and I was like, I was with my friend and I was like, oh my God, you have to go try the bathroom. And she's like, what? And I was like, there's a bidet. Like, and she was like, I'm in go the, I'm it. going. And she, so she like puts her stuff down and she goes to the bathroom to try it out. It was it was good times. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, anyway, so yeah, I should I guess I should shouldn't say that I haven't ever used a bidet before, but I'm just not like super comfortable, like not even not super comfortable, but they're a little bit foreign to me, I guess. So um I'm glad that you could share your experience. Yeah. I, like it reduces the amount we go through so much because there's no like right. there's no second wipe or third or right. fourth or whatever. Yeah. And yeah. It, like I've also heard that you just feel like clean and fresh and like yeah <laughs> you know how you wear a thong yes and sometimes your thong is dirty it's like you never have to worry about that ever again <laughs> you're like perfect great yeah, yeah. it's mm -hmm. like it's noticeably cleaner it really is right yeah yeah it's like very fresh okay so then there's one other thing that i want to talk about and this is i guess kind of like the ultimate low waste or zero waste toilet paper and this is it's called family cloth and this is like the reusable toilet paper is this a brand yeah biz and i kind of no it's just it that's what it's called like that's what the kids are calling it these days family cloth which to be honest like family cloth is the worst name ever for for this like yeah, i don't, don't know why don't share these with your family i mean right like the, and that's not the idea basically <laughs> the idea is that it's like it, it would be like something similar to what you have as like the reusable tissues yeah is that like you just have fabric swatches that you like use as toilet paper or like to dry yourself after with a bidet and then you just like have a spot in your bathroom i guess to, to kind of collect these and then you, if you have a like special container or whatever for them then it's easy to keep it like sanitary and and clean yeah. and then you can just like throw those right into the washing machine oddly enough Not i actually deal. had a conversation mm -hmm. about this exact thing with um a friend of mine recently who told me that she is allergic to most toilet papers something Ooh, okay. something in the binding agent they use to keep the fibers together she can't she can't do it so she was mm -hmm. like you're into all this stuff tell me what i should do she was like considering like reusable is that a thing and i was like yeah mm -hmm. just you know make yourself little nappies out of flannel <laughs> something nice and cozy <laughs> <laughs> yeah super soft and then i said su i suggested getting like a, a diaper genie or something along that line to mm -hmm. keep it until you can wash it right yeah just to keep it like contained. And if you if you get a bidet, then you're not gonna have to worry about those wipes being super dirty, right? Because mm -hmm. they're basically just wiping the water off of you, going into the container, and then they can stay in there till laundry day. If you don't have the bidet to like wipe yourself down first, then you probably want to rinse them out first. But yeah, but yeah, I I, I do kind of feel like the ultimate like. Like, I feel like this would be, like, a luxury experience would be to have, like, a nice heated bidet and then, like, a lovely flannel <laughs> family cloth. And, like, there you go. Like, a luxury bathroom I don't, experience that's also I don't know if I will take on that Anyways, term. Family cloth. The family cloth. Yeah. I don't know why it's called that. That's just Who from my understanding that? of reading reading blogs and stuff. Okay. That's, that's just what I have heard I do it spend Anyways. a lot less time on the internet than you do. You do. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, this is this is very well known. Um <laughs> but yeah, so I guess that's that kind of covers I mean some of the options. I also I guess just wanted to kind of say briefly, because I don't know a ton about this, um, because I was raised in, you know, westernized culture. But uh like obviously there's lots of cultures where they are zero waste and they don't use toilet paper because they use like different hand techniques and whatever. So I don't know anything about this, but hand um, techniques. I, yeah. So in a lot of countries like Morocco, Bangladesh, in Africa, like they don't use toilet paper. They use their hands to wipe themselves clean and then like they wash their hands after. And that's just like kind of common, commonplace. So it is like a westernized idea that we use paper to clean ourselves anyway so i would be interested to actually know the history of toilet paper and where it yeah this is introduced. that's also not something that i knew 
or that I know. But I just know that like, obviously, there's, you know, kind of a wide range of culturally appropriate things. But yeah, I I definitely think that there's a lot more to learn. But if you want to start with baby steps, maybe if you're like have grown up in westernized culture, yeah, maybe using a more sustainable toilet paper and then working to the bidet family class and then like trying something else. But I will say I am someone who um, I do a lot of like backcountry camping and hiking and that's kind of another like no trace camping i don't know if you've ever heard of that but Mm -hmm. that's like a very common backcountry no trace kind of thing and included in no trace is also like you don't leave your toilet paper behind like i feel like a lot of people this is kind of a weird like a lot of people get uncomfortable i guess kind of with the idea of this but there's a few different things that i've read and so for me personally when i'm going backcountry camping this is something that i learned from my sister she was like honestly it's totally just a comfort thing you can bring toilet paper with you if you want and then just have like a plastic bag that you just you know like put your toilet paper in and then like pack out or like what she does is essentially don't use toilet paper and like use different methods of like to be completely honest using like a stick or a rock or like something natural to or like a leaf but be careful to, which leaf you um, pick. wipe yourself off yes i think that we've all heard of like the the dreaded like oh my goodness i picked like poison ivy and wipe my bum with it leaves of three let it be <laughs> but, but to be honest like this is something uh like first of all just just to be clear if you are hiking in the backcountry like please dig a hole <laughs> dig a hole do your business. I would recommend using a rock, which I know sounds like very odd, but if you find a nice smooth rock, like it's totally pleasant. And <laughs> yeah, and like do your business, bury it, no trace camping. Like that is kind of, I guess, my recommendation. And so I was a bit nervous when I first started doing this. So I did bring toilet paper just as like, just in case. But now that I'm like a little bit more comfortable, that that's kind of my method. Um, and everybody's different, but that's what I would kind of recommend. And and there is a way to go to the bathroom not using toilet paper. I, I don't so. mind peeing. I don't mind just peeing saying. in the woods. Pooping in the woods is something that I'm not super happy about. So I usually try well, to. Well, when you're backcountry camping, you got to do it. So. But you, they, there <laughs> you are get places used to that, it. You just got to like pick your backcountry places that have an outhouse. Oh, yes. Uh, or you could do that. Yeah. I will say <laughs> like personally, I'm like quite an outdoors person. I would say there's like nothing quite like pooping in like, you know, with a view <laughs> or like, you know, there's just something about it. Do you watch Rick and Morty? I do, yes. <laughs> do you remember the toilet that Rick had for himself on like some uninhabited planet? Oh. Is that is that what it's like? Yeah, and it was like his special. It's like throne. very peaceful and lovely. Is that what it's like? It basically. <laughs> it kind of depends. It kind of depends, but there is there is yeah. You can just like take a little a little moment to go to the bathroom in solace on your own, <laughs> and it's silent and it's nice and. I don't know, nature. Anyway, so (laughs) getting a little bit off track, but that's kind of all the information. I feel like I threw so much information out there about different kinds of toilet paper and like different things. Yeah, this is a very specific topic and there's lots of, there's, there's options out there. There's so many different options. And and like I said, for every person who's in whatever stage of their like low waste process, yeah, it might look completely different. I hopefully one day I am like would like to have a bidet. I don't think it's going to be soon. <laughs> Remember, yeah, this is... well, like I said, I have to warm my partner up to that. But I say just do it. Just put it in. He'll he'll get curious. You're right. That might not be a bad idea. Anyways, but I also don't want to just buy yeah, something just unnecessarily. Like, no pressure, honey. I want it for me. If you want to <laughs> use it fine if you don't that's cool too. yeah also cool <laughs> yeah excellent okay well anyways guys biz is there anything else that you have to add or that you want to add just our wine cheese and dessert right just our wine cheese and dessert oh my goodness okay i almost forgot what is your wine cheese and dessert okay so my wine is i kind of made an ass of myself and uh i ordered my my <laughs> please tell my uh-huh. bag. <laughs> you're gonna really enjoy this aren't you <laughs> my <laughs> bamboo hairbrush is dying so okay uh, i thought i would replace it with one that i found from jack 59 i bought Mm -hmm. a hairbrush from jack 59 and because i love jack 59 and i love their shampoo and i bought Mm -hmm. this hairbrush and when it showed up on my door i opened the box and out came pouring a bunch of packing peanuts Mm. so i was like like regular packing peanuts or 
Well, or like little did I know. Friendly. Little peanuts. did I know. Oh, so uh-huh. I was like, packing peanuts? What the heck is this? Jack 59 would <laughs> never have packing peanuts? This is outrageous. <laughs> yeah, so the first thing like, I did is I emailed Jack heck? 59 and I'm like, yeah. what the heck? I mean, I, I phrased it in a way as best I could saying, hey, Biz emailed him is- being, what the heck? What? <laughs> this is the worst. I'm going to burn down Jack 59. No, just kidding. Yeah, I'm <laughs> just kidding. That violent. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I phrased kidding. it in such a way like I am concerned uh, there might be something more going on. Maybe these are somehow environmentally friendly, but there was no indication in the package of that. And, mm-hmm. or maybe they're reused. I don't know. Uh, so I got a quick reply back, actually, and they explained that the packing peanuts are made out of starch. And if you run them mm, underwater, okay. they just completely disappear. So, of okay. course, that was the first so, thing I did. And it was, yeah. I, I, and so I went to work the next day. And there were packing peanuts in one of our incoming boxes. So I ran mm-hmm. to the bathroom and to see if it was also one of those. And it was. So I ran around to all of my coworkers. And I'm like, you guys, you guys, you want to see a magic trick? <laughs> Biz went on a rampage and was like, <laughs> get me your packing peanuts. Look, the packing peanuts are made out of starch. I'm so excited. <laughs> Oh, okay. That it, the only reason I know that is because I have also bought, pro- like, purchased a product that had gotten sent to me, and then like they had made a note of the packing peanuts being starch that are biodegradable and not plastic. Yeah. So that's and the only did, reason I know that they um, did point out to me in the email that they have all this information on their website. Had I only looked, right? So, right. Mm, yeah. There but. you go. Anyways, <laughs> well, that's good. But <laughs> anyway, so it ended positively. So I was happy with that. Unfortunately, I hate the brush. <laughs> oh no! So I'm hey, like, oh. well, you know who needs a new hairbrush? Do you need a new me, hairbrush? Actually. I do because my I have a like a plastic hairbrush that I have been clinging on to and using for like it's probably like seven years old. Anyways, and it is like it stabs my scalp when I use it, so I oh, need dear. a new hairbrush. So okay, you, well, this one will definitely like yours, not do that. Uh, so okay. next time I see you, you have a new hairbrush. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yay. Maybe... I feel better now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe it's just not the right hairbrush for you. It is not the right hairbrush for me. I loved my last hairbrush. I mean, I'm still using it because it is somewhat functional, but the bristles are like falling out one by one. And so mm. it's going to slowly, I just thought I would get a new one before I was desperate and had to go just buy the first thing I found. But, yeah. Mm, not that one. That's not the one. Okay. It's not the one for you. So don't worry. It might be the one for me. Anyway, it, <laughs> it might be the one for you. Uh, my cheese on the topic of mm-hmm. toilets is yep. what's the difference between roast beef and pea soup? Oh, what is it? Anyone can roast beef. Oh, gross. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't like that joke. <laughs> 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 okay all right yeah mm-hmm. and my right, dessert is, your dessert is, is like, that let's move on my wor- <laughs> my worms got a new home oh okay so i got one of Explain. those like tiered worm houses oh okay i thought that you had given your worms away i was like why but home. yes no the no, tiered no they got worm- a new house a little, little yeah new home so yeah, it's yeah. a tiered tiered home oh my gosh welcome to the best worm composting of your life right i'm very excited and when i looked in there yeah uh when i moved them all over there were lots of little wigglers happily wiggling around so i'm like yay they survived (laughs) oh good yeah they're gonna love made bin and now they're in a better home and i will take good care of you guys yeah honestly now that i have a layered vermicomposting system my worms are thriving like they've been in there for about a year i guess so like they've had some time to settle but they are just taken off like going crazy Excellent. anyways <laughs> all right what's your wine cheese and dessert okay so my wine cheese and dessert i'm going to talk a little bit more about well my wine is is that going back to toilet paper and camping if you are on a trail or you are hiking or you are out in the wilderness somewhere and you like need to use the bathroom and it's imminent and not going well like please do everyone a favor and like go somewhere maybe off the trail and please 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 dig a hole and like bury your waste because um i have been on too many hikes where we have a dog and someone has taken a poop right off the trail and the amount of times that like 
that dog has almost eaten human poop and us had to like anyways it's just like a total nightmare are you, are you really good at identifying because what poop? if it's dog poop Oh, you can tell. <laughs> Trust me, you can tell. Mostly because human poop, especially the people who leave their toilet paper attached and flapping oh. in the wind for everyone to see, yeah, makes okay. me crazy. Okay, I have definitely come across like random chunks of toilet paper that have definitely been used. Yeah, so do everyone a favor. If you're bringing toilet paper bring a plastic bag or like a Ziploc or something to put it in. Like it is not that difficult. Or bury your toilet paper because it's biodegradable. A reusable plastic bag. Yeah. I mean, to be <laughs> honest, if you're putting used toilet paper in it, like to be honest, like I don't know if I would be super inclined to put like human fecal matter in a bag and then wash it and reuse it. Well, what if it's like your camping poop bag? I mean, yeah. I, don't don't bring it home and put cookies in it and give it to your neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I mean. Okay, yeah, yeah. If you have like a if you have a special bag for it, like that's totally fine. It don't like yeah, reuse your silicone bag and yeah, put cookies in it. You're right. That's disgusting. That's Anyways, gross. but please, like for the enjoyment of all people in the outdoors, just like bury your poop. That's all I ask. And do it off the trail. Like it's not that hard. So that's my wine, because just please know. Um, okay, so my cheese is is that so over uh, this last little while, I've had a bit of time on my hands and I have like been repairing a bunch of my clothes. And so I'm very excited. I patched my first shirt with some extra denim that Biz gave me like a while back. And so I patched my favorite uh, thrift store shirt. And you're going to post pictures of that, love. right? Oh, I definitely am. Nice. Don't worry. It's already, it's already planned for instagram um but anyways <laughs> so i patched this shirt and then i realized that like subconsciously when i was like planning my clothing repairs that i was doing i purposely planned this specific shirt first because it actually isn't my shirt <laughs> it's my partner's shirt <laughs> and i was like oh well if i screw this one up then <laughs> like at least it's it is a shirt that i wear but like it's not my shirt. It's his shirt. So if you're gonna if you're gonna do some clothing repair, I would recommend my cheese is is to just like if you're starting out, just try your partner's stuff first. Just repair because... someone else's stuff first. <laughs> yeah, wow. just to like kinda, you know. I feel like I'm the opposite. I'm like and if this... I ruin it, it's mine, and I'm the only one who has to suffer. And, and this and this being said, uh, the patching went really well. It looks good. So like you know, no no harm no foul, but. Anyways, that's just like my little my little cheese. <laughs> Take it with what you want. <laughs> and my dessert is is that I feel like because, you know, I talk more about like an eco lifestyle and I don't know, I'm living it, I guess you could say. But I had a friend post on Instagram about how they were doing like a closet clean out. And I'm super excited because I got two like really, really nice pieces of clothing from them on their like Instagram closet clean out that I'm really excited for that are like reused and they, yeah, are like essentially almost like brand new quality. And they're kind of doing closet clean out because they're like, I have all of these like actually really nice clothes. I just don't wear them. And, you know, they're like trying to be more minimalistic and all this kind of stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I got some like like two really bomb shirts for 20 bucks that are like absolutely awesome and i'm really excited for so nice i do find because people know that i'm into that like thrifting and stuff people just give me their clothes they're oh like, yeah ah, this like kind of looks like it might fit you what do you think and i'm like cool well, i'll try it and like, you're like sweet <laughs> yeah. and i just i almost never buy clothes because Right, I, I know. To just yeah, accumulate me neither. them for free some other way. And, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. So I feel like there's just so many. Um, I guess kind of my dessert is, is that like I'm very excited that I buy. I would say pretty much all of my clothes except for like technical gear. But even that, to be honest, I've found some really awesome technical gear like used online, and I just think that it's like there's too many clothes in the world right now that are awesome that already exist so you don't need to buy new things you can totally find amazing things that have been used for way cheaper and they're just as cool so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. anyway so that's my dessert i'm very excited for them and yeah i feel like once you kind of like start like more and more projecting maybe your values or what you believe then like kind of opportunities 
kind of become a little bit more present and aware to you. Mm -hmm. I guess that's just kind of my my, my dessert. (laughs) If you made it this far, thank you for listening to us talk about poop. Yes, thank you so much. We would love to hear your feedback. So send us an email at becominglesspod at gmail.com. And I highly encourage you all to follow us on Instagram at becominglesspod, where we are the most active in our social media. Or find us at becominglesspod.podbean.com for all the ways to connect and listen. And if you are so inclined to donate, you can also find um, ways to donate on becominglesspod.podbean.com. We hope that you guys have a great time and we encourage you to share our, our podcast if you wouldn't mind. We really hope to have you back and every day we can be a little less than we were yesterday. Biz, are you just snickering at me? Maybe. (laughs) Like, I can hear you snickering.